And let me present Britta, who will go through our agenda. Uh, Britta is one of our co-directors at the Founder Institute. By the way, I'm Eugene Grappa. I'm also one of the co-directors at the Founder Institute in Frankfurt. Uh, today, I'm in California. Um, and go ahead, Britta, why don't you go through today's agenda? Yeah, sure, oh, Eugene. Thanks, and uh, welcome, everyone, uh, to our Founder Showcase um, today. Um, giving not only our graduates from uh, our first semester the chance to pitch again and show how they develop, but also from the second semester, and also some mentors and directors who are going to pitch today. So we're really happy to have this um, after our graduation just two weeks ago, I think. So let me share the screen and... Um, um, so the, um, can you see my screen now? Yes, we see your screen. Okay, great. So our team, you by now probably know, we have uh, Eugene, myself, but we are also going to have uh, Carol, who is going to present today, Quentin, and uh, Pedro as well, uh, being there, but also his partner and co-founder is going to present, and uh, Dimitri, one of our vertical directors we had first time uh, this year. Um, so let me briefly um, yeah, tell you or share with you the agenda of today. Uh, we are going to have Adeo Resi, if he comes in, I haven't seen him yet, um, who is our uh, founder and CEO of Founder Institute back in um, California. Um, and then we are going to have Philipp Weber, our um, legal uh, sponsor and partner uh, for the first and second cohort. And he also uh, was and is a mentor of ours um, uh, for the legal sessions, but also beyond. So thanks and welcome, Philipp, uh, uh, for, for joining today. Um, and then it's showtime. Uh, we are going to see... Um, around uh, 11, 11 pitches now. Um, so we will have three many pitches um, uh, for each of the founders uh, with slides. And um, at the very end, we are going to have a brief Q&A or you can just go to all the founders you have questions to at the networking session. Afterwards, we are going to have tables set up so number one uh, who is going to pitch will get uh, table number one or you can just look out for the founder uh, you have questions to um, later on and then it's uh, really about uh, getting together network uh, discuss with between founders mentors investors directors and partners whoever comes in and uh, hope you also enjoy that um, yeah, so um, I'm not sure. Um, do we have Adeo? Otherwise, we would. Uh, I, don't, I don't see Adeo. I think he might have had uh, issues today here in California. So let's um, let's go so, with Philip. Yeah. Ah, a, wait, Adeo's just joined us. Great. Hey, Adeo. <laughs> Hey guys, I had some. Tri I lost my password. Hi everybody. <laughs> Good to have you. I was just saying, where are you? Otherwise, we would have switched to Philip. Should we switch to Philip first, and you come in, or do you just go want to go ahead? I'm ready to go. Uh, I'm I'm very excited uh, to be here, and uh, yes. Uh, it's not the first time I've lost the password. Uh, hopefully, it will be the last. But uh, so resetting a password took a moment. Anyway, thanks so much for having me, everyone. Um, excited to be here and happy to talk a little bit about entrepreneurship and and the uh, and the future right now because it's a very important time uh, for both. And so. Um, can I? Am I full screen, or do you want to? Uh, yeah, wanna... uh, Rita, can you stop sharing yeah, the screen? I, can, uh, I will switch then. Um, uh, there we go. Great. Right. Here All we right. go. Thanks, everybody. So let me first uh, start by saying that you know 
brief introduction. I've been an entrepreneur for about 26 years and about half of that time, I built tech companies like many of the people here today are, are starting to do or doing already. And I was fortunate in that uh, by the time I was 30 years old, I had uh, created two separate billion dollar companies. Uh, and, and then I started to transition into working on helping the global startup ecosystem uh, by doing things like I created a site for founders to review venture capitalists and then launched the Founder Institute, created a number of legal innovations like the Safe Note and the FAST Agreement. And so I've really seen the innovation ecosystem from a 360 degree uh, view over a you know 26 year career. And what I can say is that right now, is one of the most important. A little bit about that and, and how I see the future unfolding, et cetera. So, there are so many problems in the world today that it almost seems insurmountable to the average human being. We have climate change, a pandemic, um, in some cases, uh, violence and war and, 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 and the list and, and malnutrition and on and on and on and on. Okay. And the reality is that, uh, in many ways, our world is falling apart. And if so, you say to yourself, wow, you know, it's snowing in Texas, 10% of California burned. Uh, and, you know, again, the millions of people have died from a pandemic. And, and you keep just adding these things. And it feels like insurmountable what these problems are, the scope of the solutions needed. And then you look at the organizations that you might think could come and solve them, whether it be the United Nations, um, your own government, uh, large companies like Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, um, or Google, uh, NGOs. And the reality is they're, they're all uh, failing fairly miserably at, at addressing any and all of the challenges that humanity is facing. And so for me, from the beginning, it's been a certainty that entrepreneurs like you are, in fact, the ones that are going to change the world and fix the problems that we're facing as humanity. There's not even a doubt in my mind. I'm 100% certain of this. Because these problems are massive and the organizations that we might expect to solve them are really not able or willing or demonstrating any capability of solving any of the problems. So it's going to be many thousands of inspired entrepreneurs that come up with innovative ways to solve the various problems that we're facing bringing those solutions to market, scaling their solutions and changing the world and fixing the problems. Okay, that's how it's gonna happen. And I have no doubt about it. So I have dedicated my life now to helping this happen at a global scale. And, and I'm gonna tell you how I see it unfolding for our, a positive future for, you, for humanity and then leave you with some thoughts on how you can contribute. And, and, I'm, and many of you are contributing. So uh, to begin with, we need a framework of what matters. And unfortunately, um, humanity hasn't really done a very good job of defining that framework. And I sat on the board of the XPRIZE Foundation for uh, over a decade, and in fact, help that organization move from space to other things. And they just announced a $100 million 
prize for carbon capture sponsored by Elon Musk, who actually brought to the board of the X Prize. And um, I know firsthand that it's very hard to say what matters. But I will say one organization has done a fantastic job, and that's the United Nations 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals. These are um, very difficult goals to achieve. They're actually targeted at mainly governments. And if we achieve all 17 of the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals, uh, we will essentially stop a destructive cycle that has brought the planet to its knees and society to its knees at this moment, um, really testing our capabilities. So we're going to stop the destructive cycles. But actually, the reality is we, we need to go stopping the destruction. We need to go beyond that and start work, working on regeneration. But uh, I would be happy if we just stopped the destruction. So what we did is we took the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals, which were really meant for governments, and they have 169 sub-goals. Some are written as like, you know, 15.1, 15.2, but they also have like 15A and 15B. And we turned all of those 169 sub goals into KPIs. We call them impact KPIs or impact key performance indicators that startups can work on, right? So they're not government focused. These are startup focused. And we probably, you know, some of the KPIs, some of the uh, sub goals were fairly complicated. So we, they might be turned in, in some cases, to two or three I KPIs. So we have, you know, two to 300 I KPIs from the 169 uh, sub goals of the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals. And then we made a tool and you can see this today, right now, at fi.co slash progress, where you can go in and search and browse and actually pick into like a shopping cart the KPIs or iKPIs that you're interested in for your own startup to measure and have a positive impact on fixing the world, okay? So you can, and then once you pick the IKPIs that you're most passionate about that align with what your business is doing, if we, you start tracking them publicly on a regular basis, we believe that you become what we are calling a for progress company. And for progress is not nonprofit. Actually, we hope that most for progress companies will be for profit, but you're working to make the world a better place. And our internal goals at the Founder Institute, and we operate in over 200 cities around the world, is to create 80% of our portfolio being for progress companies by let's say 2022 and right now Europe and in particular Frankfurt, Germany, uh, but generally Europe is leading the charge producing, you know, the high 30% to 40 something percent of effectively for progress companies uh, just without any uh, pushing or prodding from from our central office, et cetera. So Europe's already leading the charge in the world of for progress. And I encourage everyone here, um, whether you're a mentor, a leader, a founder, aspiring founder, to take a look at the UN Sustainable Development Goals, to take a look at our progress initiative at fi.co slash progress, and to see if there are impact key performance indicators that work for you and inspire you because we need and need with a capital n 
we need all the founders of the world to work on things that matter so we can stop the rampant destruction and eventually begin regenerating the damage that we've done to the planet, society, et cetera, and build a future that we can be proud of. Now, we've gone further because unfortunately, lots and lots of founders working on things that matter could mean lots and lots of founders struggling to succeed. And we want founders working on things that matter to succeed uh, beyond their wildest dreams. In fact, it's important for humanity that we replace the broken models of Facebook, the broken models of Google, Netflix, et cetera, with really beautiful companies that are making the world a better place. And they are more successful than the companies that I just mentioned because they're the future. And so, whereas I think these models of, of, of uh, you know, mining and selling people's personal data, um, selling products that have, uh, that wind up as landfill and, and, and various other things that humanity seems to do a lot of are, are not constructive models, um, but rather destructive models. And so I wanna see companies pursuing constructive models, replacing these, these internet giants of the past. And in order for that to happen, companies are going to need money. Um, money to grow, money to hire, money to... Now, if you've got an idea uh, that, that is an arbitrage or, or, or one of these sort of old models, there's lots and lots, there's historically high levels of money available for you today. Yeah. So what we have said is that's great, like fine, um, God bless you, uh, but we want money available for the new models, the impact companies, the four progress companies. So by 2025, the Founder Institute is in progress right now of launching 1,000 or more new venture capital funds that are ethically based, run by diverse groups of people, women, men, racial diversity, sexual preference diversity that resemble a broader spectrum of humanity all around the world, Germany, Central Asia, South America, and these thousand funds all agree to an ethical oath of conduct called the Mensarius Oath, and they are in the world with vision alignment with the four progress companies with capital available at the pre-seed, seed, and series A stage to make sure that if you work on something that matters, that you have the best possible chances of success out there today, wherever you are, whether it be Germany, Central Asia, Asia, South America, Central America, anywhere in the world, if you're working on something that matters as an entrepreneur, we will make sure that funding is available to you. Now, it's not going to happen overnight. Um, however, the good news is, or bad news, is, you know, depending on how you look at things, the, the UN Sustainable Development Goals are targeted to be reached by approximately 2030. Some of them have uh, different time scopes, but, but in general, it's a 2030 target level. So we have roughly nine years to go, and I hope to have all thousand funds launched by 2025 and 80% of the thousands of companies we create per year working on for progress things by 2022. So we're going to have a, a, a real shot at addressing around the world by men and women, by all different 
uh, sexual preferences, all different racial compositions, people working to make this world as beautiful as possible and to solve the problems that we're facing and essentially fix the many uh, issues that plague us today. And so I, I firmly believe that it's going to be startups and the people here that make the difference. And so let me give you some thoughts on how this applies to you in closing. So as I mentioned earlier, the first thing is um, impact comes in many forms and there are many, many different IKPIs. And so if, if you are in the process of starting and building and growing your company, it's, it's never too late to think about how you can have a positive impact on the world. And so the IKPIs are a very easy way. So I might start there and search the IKPIs and see if there's something that you are already doing that can contribute very easily to the, the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals and think about tracking and measuring that and reporting on it. So that, that's low-hanging fruit easy. But if you're doing a business that may not have obvious IKPIs, you can still do things that matter. You can hire diverse teams, right? You can treat your employees with um, a higher degree of respect and care than, let's say, the law requires, which in many cases is fairly low. Um, you can do things with your team such as volunteering or helping that, that uh, go above and beyond just your corporate mission of maybe delivering some e-commerce service or something like that, but then you can take that team and do what's traditionally called CSR uh, uh, activities, you know, outside of the workplace or even integrate it inside of the workplace. So there are lots and lots and lots of ways that you as a leader can, can help make the world better. And I like to say, be the change that you want to see in the world, right? So if you're frustrated with um, how someone uh, treats their employees, or you're frustrated with the lack of diversity in the workplace, or if you're frustrated, you can, you're now leading a company, right? You're now building the future. You don't have to be frustrated anymore. You can just change it. And I encourage you to look at the things that you feel could be improved in the world and start improving it in your world, in your company. And I can tell you something, right? From lots and lots and lots and lots of experience. Okay, 26 years of experience working with startups, right? Whenever a startup starts out, a lot of times people think what they're trying to do is crazy and or impossible. And we at the Founder Institute are going to give you some advice about things that make less sense and give you advice about some things that make more sense and tips about things that work and tips about things that don't work. Okay. Um, and, and we don't tell you what to do. We give you this advice and then you as the entrepreneur need to process it. And I can tell you that I've given entrepreneurs thousands of pieces of advice and thousands of pieces of advice that have been followed and thousands of pieces of advice that have been ignored. Okay. And that's okay. Cause at the end of the day, the decision of what to do with your company is yours. Right. But what I've seen repeatedly is that if you have a strong set of beliefs and you're passionate about what you do, you can be the change that you want to see in the world and make even the craziest things seem possible. Right. So and I have 
endless stories of this. When we sat in a room at the X Prize and theorized private space flight, um, and now private space flight is happening frequently, right? When uh, Elon and I were like, let's go do a, a space company, and people were like, you're insane. No, there's never been a successful private space company in history like that will never work uh and and just even the founder institute we're going to create companies all around the world that are going to matter people are like no companies that matter only get started in silicon valley and maybe new york and maybe london it's never going to happen anywhere else There'll be plenty of times where you're like, maybe, maybe everyone else was right. Maybe this is a really stupid thing. I mean, Elon's fourth rocket blew up and he was in my house when it, when it, or third rocket blew up and he was in my house when it happened and, and he was bankrupt. Basically he was borrowing money from his friends to survive. And, you know, it was a dark place and he was getting uh, hounded by the press. You know, he's a darling of the press now, but they used to insult him all the time. Uh, so it's going to be harder than you think. There are going to be very difficult periods where you question everything that you're doing. But if you know you're on the right path and you believe in what you're doing, then eventually you will prevail and you will build something that you can be very, very proud of and, and can have a real positive impact on your life, on the life of your loved ones and hopefully on the world. And, and that's why we're here. So uh, with that said, uh, sorry, I was a couple minutes late. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's been really, really lovely to chat with everyone today. And, and I wish you great success on your entrepreneurial journey. Thank you so much, Adeo. This was such an encouraging and inspiring uh, speech for, for all of us, uh, I think, uh, especially also mentioning the SDGs, which uh, um, thankfully, or we are very happy to have a few founders uh, today to showcase that. And uh, so thank you so much for your time and yeah, um, giving this kind of really encouragement and, and also with ideas that this is now the time to, to do it and to believe in, in our dreams and in the things we want to change. Um, so um, I'm really excited also once, you know, society is able to overcome the pandemic to come back and visit. I love Frankfurt. I love Germany. Um, you know, I really see, as I said, as you were saying, a lot of great founders inspired by the SDGs and to make the world a better place. And, and Europe right now, guys, feel very fortunate because while Europe has a lot of problems, one of the problems is not caring about the planet and caring about future. So you guys are right minded there and, and it's beautiful to see. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, guys. The scene also comes from here, from this region. And also, we uh, want to uh, now introduce um, Philip, our sponsor and legal um, partner um, um, of the first and the second cohort of Founder Institute uh, here. So I'm happy to uh, now announce um, him. Uh, to talk a bit about his experience in this very difficult uh, period of time, but also um, giving some uh, positive examples because definitely one of the um, boards you are sitting on with Wingcopter is a company which uh, definitely uh, looks into the SDGs and is solving quite some massive uh, problems, bringing hum humanity with the drones and to, to, to heal or to bring the vaccine to people who are probably not accessible otherwise. So um, there are a lot of great examples here in the region. And uh, Philip, um, now I would like uh, to, uh, the sta uh, stage is yours and uh, thank you for coming in. 
Thank you, Britta. Thank you, Britta, for your kind introduction. Thank you all for having me here. Um, and although he already left, uh, thanks, Adeo, for his inspiring speech um, and the great initiative to support the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals, um, because I agree, solving the great problems of mankind, and I think uh, the last year showed a lot of uh, problems we are having um, besides coronavirus or COVID-19 pandemics, uh, which need to be solved. And I think um, innovation and technology uh, could really solve our problems and be a solution to it. Um, Today, I would like to focus more on the local ecosystem. And as uh, Britta uh, just mentioned, uh, Britta asked me to yeah, um, present a bit my personal review on the last year of the COVID year and to give you a, a bit of an outlook. Um, what I expect will, we will be facing in, uh, in, in this year. Um, I will try to change my screen don't know whether this will work um, because it's always a bit tricky um, to share screens. Let me let me try. So here we go. I hope you can all see it now. This yes. is fine. Okay, perfect. Um, so, so my review for the last year. Um, yeah, we, we all had uh, to uh, tackle with a lot of uncertainty with a crisis we have never had before. Um, some of us have been very uh, have been hit hard. Um, some industries, um, other industries, uh, even did benefit um, from from the pandemic, in particular e-commerce or other digital business models. Um, last year, for me, it was a very busy year. Um, together with my team, I advised on about 27 um, transactions, venture capital transactions and tech M&A transactions. So, but what I've experienced is that uh, yeah, meeting online, having teams and web conferences is, is, is very great and it's a really great uh, workaround for personal meetings. Um, and sometimes it even saves time and money because you don't have to travel. However, also my other observation is that everything takes a bit longer because um, sometimes when you are really facing really big problems um, and, and some, sometimes uh, emotional difficulties, it's uh, such issues are easier to solve when you can meet in person. Um, so um, an observation was that in particular rounds of financing got a bit delayed and everything took a bit longer. Usually, investors back their startups, and, and that's a great signal that when your investor backs you, even if you're in trouble. Um, and there was also still a lot of new money in the market. Adeo mentioned that uh, too. However, most startups uh, did follow the advice, and it's a very wise advice to, to cut spending, to just to extend the runway. And here in Germany, we had some great instruments like short-time work um, to, to cut costs. We also, in particular here in the region, have a lot of great programs, state aid programs. Um, for example, the second pillar of uh, the startup uh, aid package. Um, some startups in the region made use of it um, and um, received up to yeah, 800,000 euros um, to survive the COVID crisis. With respect to our ecosystem, yeah, the, the ecosystem quickly adapted um, to the new situation and uh, most formats and programs went online or uh, did it, uh, the, the new buzzword as hybrid events. Um, also for Founder Institute, um, it was really great to see um, that um, 
Britta, Eugenio and the whole team, um, they did run the program more or less completely online. And I think this is, uh, was very important also for, for the ecosystem and, and for the startups. And it shows that this works as a workaround. So it's not the best solution, I think. And I'm really looking forward to live events, but it's a great workaround. And as Britta just mentioned, um, for a lot of startups here in the region, um, despite the COVID-19 pandemics, um, 2020 was a really great year. And um, there are really a lot of great examples, but um, forgive me that I mentioned, uh, the, uh, mentioned the ones where I have been involved in because uh, <laughs> I, I, um, I'm mostly familiar with. For example, one of the great examples last year was the exit of Freeman. Freeman, um, yeah, founded um, in, in Frankfurt, and they received their first seed round of financing in uh, 2019. And um, yeah, they they have, I think, everything what you need to have as a great startup. You need to have a really great team. Yeah, that's uh, first of all most important. Then you need to have a great idea. Uh, with uh, digital out of home advertising, so using screens in football stadiums or in co working spaces uh, to deliver uh, ads. And um, therefore, having a great market with a, a high growth rate. Um, and when you combine it, uh, you can achieve an, a great exit uh, in a really short period of time. And I think this was a really great example, and it's really inspiring um, that um, yeah, that what, what you can achieve yeah when you when you are really have ambition yeah, and this I think is I think a really great example it should be a great example for a lot of um, companies in in the region um and startups and entrepreneurs that you really can achieve great things even within a very short period of time another great example um but i just mentioned it is wingcopter so wingcopter is a startup from darmstadt uh, they started bootstrapping yeah, some years ago in in, in darmstadt um, and developed their own drone um, for delivery. So they are not focusing on air taxi and, and other uh, niche things. So they are focusing on the big problem of humanity um, that in remote areas um, or even in the populated areas, um, delivery takes a lot of time. And um, yeah, you can overcome that issue um, by delivering, in particular, important goods uh, like um, uh, drugs, vaccines, etc., cetera, uh, via drone. And they are partnering with UNICEF for projects, for example, in Africa, where they are already uh, delivering vaccines uh, to remote areas. Um, and last year, they secured a 2020 million US do a dollar Series A round from international investors, including um, Silicon Valley based investor. Um, and I think this is really a, has been a great example for, for the region. And I think it demonstrates really the strengths of the region. So um, I think. Uh, Berlin is great in e-commerce, or has been great in e-commerce, but uh, the wider Rhein-Main region and Frankfurt region is really great, a great place for really high-tech startups. And uh, Darmstadt is a really great example for this. Um, let me focus in two minutes on, on my personal outlook for 2021 for this year. Um, I think there is still a lot of uncertainty in the market, although <laughs> I, uh, two days before I uh, just signed my fifth round of financing this year. Um, however, uncertainty will 
continue to exist a bit time longer because COVID-19 will still stay longer than expected. <laughs> um, however, I think uh, once vaccine is available for everybody or um, yeah, mass testing is available, there will be a very quick recovery. Yeah, but however, it's still unclear when this will happen. End of summer, end of this year, beginning of that next year. Yeah, so one must be patient. Um, however, in particular for hardware startups, one must be careful uh, about shortages of supplies because when, uh, when economy rebounds, uh, there will be really a shortage in supplies from, from Asia. Yeah, so this should be taken into account. You cannot ramp up production um, in a second. So uh, really be careful about your supply chains. Um, I think it's, however, really a great time to, to start a startup. Yeah, because now you have maybe the time to sit down and, and think about what you're doing. Um, maybe focus on really on the ESG topic, uh, sustainability topic, which is from my perspective, a mega trend in, 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 in startup investing, in particular with respect to prop tech, fintech, mobility, so um, there are lots of opportunities regarding sustainable development goals or ESG goals. Um, there are also a lot of opportunities in the heavily affected industries, um, like for example, food or um, entertainment, um, travel, so um, maybe one can take the time to identify a new or existing customer needs in this market. Um, there is still a lot of money in the market. Um, <laughs> the new mega trend are the SPACs. So every CEO or former CEO is now uh, raising a, a, a SPAC to uh, then um, acquire a startup to um, list it at the stock exchange uh, very easily. So um, there will even be more money, therefore, in the market for startups and uh, growth companies. Um, however, as I said before, we do not really know when uh, recovery will start. So really watch your cash burn rate. Um, there is one issue for startups uh, and startup valuation. Startup valuation is, uh, yeah, <laughs> usually based on um, revenue or turnover multiples. So when revenue is affected, you need to raise on future revenues. So really um, be careful with your story and uh, try to uh, build up uh, a great investment case. So um, get um, feedback of future customers, get LOIs. Um, to demonstrate that you have really a great pipeline in the future, although you had been affected by COVID-19. Um, and do your homework. And with respect to the ecosystem, I think uh, once um, personal meetings are safe again, um, yeah, the ecosystem will uh, again um, quickly meet in person and I'm really looking forward um, to, to this uh, when this happens, um, to have a cold beer or apple together with you all. Um, and I think also it, it would make uh, startup mentoring a bit easier again because, um, yeah, Teams, Zoom, etc. is a great workaround, but um, real life um, really is uh, is really helpful for for mentoring and for helping uh, startups to grow. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Philip, so much um, for uh, giving. Yeah, looking back first of all, but also then uh, giving us uh, your outlook uh, for two thousand twenty one. 